මෙරට සංචාරක ප්‍රවර්ධනය වඩාත් ආකර්ෂණීයව සිදු කරමින් මෙන්ම ශ්‍රී ලංකාවට විදේශ විනිමය ගෙන ඒම මූලික අරමුණු කර ගනිමින් සිසිලියස් වස්තා ග්ලෝබල් ආයතනය නව ආකාරයේ වැඩසටහනක් මීගමු ජේට්වින් ලැගුන් හෝටලයේදී සංවිධානය කර තිබුණා. ඒ අනුව යෝගා ක්‍රියාකාරකම් වලින වෙත්ම වැඩමුළුවක් ලෙස පැවැත්වූ මෙම වැඩසටහනෙහි පළමු අධ්‍යයන සඳහා ඉන්දියානු සංචාරකයන් හතරියකින් යුත් කණ්ඩායමක් දිව එනට පැමිණියා. හතනිස් දිනකගෙන් යුත් එම කණ්ඩායම පුරා දින හතක් බෙරට තුල රැඳෙමින් මෙම වෘත්ව වැඩමුළුවෙහි අංග සඳහා සහභාගී වෙනවා. මෙම වෘත්ව ක්‍රියාකාරකම් තුලින් බොහෝ ලෙඩිතුඩු සමනය කර मानसिक में इनमें शारीरिक या नवज जावयाक उद्दीप ने वन हाथर मानसिक आतंक या दुर्लभ मदद या माना पीतो बाले हस्त बनवा वायु आंकुरण दाता हके प्रदान आत्मेन ये पैरवरुवे आरंभ करुना बेम वैदसा ठाना साधगमिया फाउंडेशन इंडिया आयतनीय वेनुवेन डीपी माहिश महाता विसिन बेह वनुले बुआ सांचारक प्रवर्धन आयतनीय अक्लेस सिसिली सुवस्ता सांचारक प्रवर्धन आयतनीय आरंभ करन वैदसा ठाने मूल कारमुना ब्राटतुना उग्र डॉलर आर्बुदया पावतीना पशु विमका विदेश सांचारक इन वैदिपशीयन मेरठ � जेटविन ब्लू सह जेटविन लगून यान होटल मोलिक करमीन पैवत में नवा ये टा हमारे वक खतरगा मधे वाले क्रेन द कर गाने में इंद एक वैद्य सटाहना पैवत में मटन नियमित आए तथा ये अटेंड एवरी डे डिफरेंट आदर प्रोग्राम्स पर ऑल द डेलीगेट्स एंड द टेन पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर श्रीलंकन सो हियर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल आर इं about the Indian Cultural Center, which is renamed as Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, which was established 25 years back by the then Prime Minister of India, Sri Atal Bihari Basbai, in 1998. And this is a center that we do lots of cultural diplomacy. This year is very important for India in Sri Lanka for many reasons. We are celebrating 75 years of diplomatic relations with Sri Lanka, 25 years of Indian Cultural Center here in Sri Lanka, 100 years of Indian mission in Kandy. So there are lots of 25, 75, 100 uh, this year. That is why this year is a special year for us as well. Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, we do basically cultural diplomacy that we always say. It is a cultural arm of the High Commission of India, Colombo. But uh, we do lots of activities in a pan-Sri pan Lanka basis. And also we have different programs using soft power tools, Indian soft power tools. Whenever we discuss about Indians, India's soft power tools, it is not only music and dance, it is not only the food or the attire, it is more on the wellness. There is always a, I always find yoga, meditation, all these techniques are considered in many places as a fitness uh, solution. They're not fitness solution, they're the wellness solution. There's a difference between the fitness and the wellness. So breathing technique and to, re to revisit the past lives through different experiences is a kind of very ancient Indian practice. We had a long chat day before yesterday with Mr. Mahesh and Mr. Nagaraza. In few years, that we we did a lot of activities on the area of wellness in Sri Lanka, promoting more particularly Ayurveda and yoga. Yoga, I personally believe that there are more awareness on yoga than many parts of India. Here in Sri Lanka, the people are very very aware about yoga. There are lots of institutions of yoga. And that is the reason that this year, 
from the High Commission of India, Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center. We organized 50 days consecutive programs on yoga throughout the island with 102 events. The only reason is yoga should not be celebrated on 21st June. It should be a practice of our life. So that is the reason that we organize in different places. And I am so happy to inform you that we organized not only in like in the places uh, of Hindu dominance or any Hindu uh, religious institutions. Instead of that, we did a lot of activities targeting different age groups. We did a lot of kids yoga in different schools so that they can have the practice of using yoga as a wellness tool from their childhood. We did lots of yoga in the girls' schools, those who are entering into puberty. For them, yoga is how yoga is important for them. Even we did yoga for the oldest homes. In different people we involved, and I'm so happy to inform, we were invited by many Buddhist monastic institutions. They are known as Pirivena here. In so many Pirivena, they invited us to do yoga session for the venerable monks. We also did for Dhamma school. There is a concept called Dhamma school. Just I would like to take one more minute time. Dhamma school is such a beautiful concept here in Sri Lanka. The students who go to the different schools, they have to come on every Sunday to the Buddhist temple nearby in that locality. And they organize some teachings of Lord Buddha. Okay? And it is called as Dhamma school. In Dhamma school, it is not only the, uh, uh, the curriculum is like only on the Buddhist uh, or Lord Buddha's teachings, but apart from that also, some other subjects are also considered, which is, I haven't seen in India, the, the concept of ki uh, this kind of Dhamma school. So basically to provide, not to make the religious, but to give the spiritual thinking from their childhood. So that is why I, I hope that you have noticed that many people uh, here in Sri Lanka, all the people are very down to earth, very obedient and uh, very approachable. It may be because of that, they have the teaching from their childhood with the spirituality. So I am not going to take much of your time. Again, I would like to welcome all of you to Sri Lanka. Uh, I wish that you have a very good time, very good retreat here for next seven days. And also, if you are staying here for some more time, we are celebrating World Ayurveda Day on 10th November in a grand way. So you can also participate. I have already requested Mr. D.P. Mahesh to deliver a lecture on the World Ayurveda Day. Ayurveda is also considered very, very important here. Uh, there are a complete university. Apart from, means in, in Sri Lanka, there are 17 public universities. In India, we have 1,000, nearly 300 universities in private, public, all this. Uh, central universities, state universities. Here, there are public universities, 17 universities. Out of 17 universities, there is one university that is called Gampaha Vikramarachi University. It is only for the indigenous medicine. It's only for Ayur Ayurveda, Yunani. And there is an Eastern University in Trincomalee campus. There is a faculty on Siddha medicine. In Colombo University, you will be surprised to know there is a big faculty on indigenous medicine. They call the faculty of indigenous medicine. And they have around 1,000 students every year. So Ayurveda is considered, it is a kind of uh, place where Ayurveda is practiced in an extensive way. So these wellness techniques are very, very important for the modern life 
and so that is why I wish you a very, very successful retreat here. And I would like to congratulate Honorable Chairperson of Shastra, Mr. Nagaraza, Mr. Mahesh. Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And it's again and again and again. Then I asked uh, the Siddha, I don't know why this song is reverberating in my ears. He said, maybe you need to do something on it, look into it. I said, what I need to do? <laughs> because uh, that, that was part of my life. I was completely detached from the whole world, you can say. Like because of some of the experiences, awakening I had. And I wanted to just remain aloof or be like a, like a monk and remain in the mountains. I didn't want to come back to the you know, main world, something like that. And when, when at that time this Siddha said, maybe this is telling you something. Maybe think of doing something. I said, what do I do? Where do I do? Where do I start? Like he said, start from this song. This is where I picked up the word Sadgamaya Foundation. Sadgamaya is all about the, the meaning of the song in English. Like it goes like this, from ignorance to the truth. And from darkness to the light, lead me to the light. And from death, lead me to immortality. And let there be peace everywhere. That's what the whole song is all about. So starting finding the truth. So that's where the Sadgamaya Foundation is all about. Finding the truth. What is the true path? Even Buddha, this whole country, the, you know, Sri Lanka, reverberates, vibrates with such amazing Buddha's energy. Even the Buddha used to talk about this, the path. It's all about the right path. You being in the right path, you know, there's a very famous book I read about, you know, in this path. He says, once you know the path, when you're walking on the path, if you happen to see a Buddha on the path, he says, kill the Buddha. Have you heard about this? A very famous book on this, written by a monk. He says, once you're in a path, if you happen to see the Buddha again, you need to kill the Buddha. Why we need to kill the Buddha? Because once you know the path, your duty to just walk. No more Buddha you need. So it's all about the path. The path is such essential one for all of us, which can take us to the immortality. Immortality is all about knowing a multi-dimensional personality. The sir was mentioning about Ayurveda. Whatever the, you know, the ancient did actually. So the Ayurveda, for example, yoga, for example, are there insights about health, about the nature, about the origin of the creation and everything is all just because they could connect to their multi-dimensional personality. We are not very limited actually, we are unlimited. The day when we wake up to that reality, life will not be the same again. All the challenges you think we are facing, they actually, they are not challenges, they are like your stepping stones for the ultimate success. So in that, keeping that in mind, I started the Sadgamaya Foundation and we all know, many of you are connected to Sadgamaya. So, in one of the main things we always talk about in Sadgame is the breath. Because breath being the reality. The breath is the closest to the truth. And that's where the five elements of breath work come from, actually. So, because connecting to the five elements, you actually open up to the true reality, the true dimension of your own breath. Thereby, you'll be able to connect to the multi-dimensional personality of yourself. So, thereby, you can increase your vibration, not only you transform yourself wherever you are, you transform the environment also. Many of you already seen the changes in your family. Just because you changed, there is something start changing in your family. Not only that, something start changing in the workplace. Everything, everything has to change. Uh, just to quote one small example here, long back there was an experiment but done by about 1000 plus Buddhist monk. What they did is, they choose one city where the crime rates are highest. Highest. Can you name one city where the crime rates are highest? Delhi. Yeah? Delhi. Delhi. <laughs> okay. There are other places too. <laughs> it was, they choose, they chose New York. New York in America. Okay. This 1000 monks happens to go to New York. It was a, a proper experiment. It was done. It was a fact. Like, you know, you might find this on the internet somewhere. These 1,000 monks went to New York City and they didn't meet anybody. They did not go to, you know, uh, tell police that you do something special. I did not go and meet any criminals, nothing. You know, all they did was stay in one nice place, maybe like this. And then they went on meditating every day as much as possible. Maybe five hours, six hours, even ten hours, they would spend time in meditation. 
because 1,000 monks are meditating together. Can you imagine the vibration? See, the, 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 the vibration starts spreading in the city and later they say, after one week, the crime rates start falling down, like actually, like the incident. In one month, the crime reduced by, the incident in New York City reduced by 60%. Just imagine, that's the power of a good vibrational being coming together. That, that's the power, believe me. Like, like for example, all of you being here, doing this seven days retreat here. Trust me, there will be a shift in the energy of here. Yes or no? This whole hall would change. So like that it is. That's the power of you know you being good. So we keeping that in mind, we started working on five elements breath work, where you connect to the five elements, you connect to the breath, and then also this past life regression is a continuation of that. So in Sadhgamaya Foundation, we focus on these two, five element breath work and then past life regression. So this is like I felt like this is one of the best gift we can ever share with with all our fellow uh, you know, the, the seekers together. And thank you for being here, continuing this journey. And I take this opportunity to thank uh, Sir for being here with us. And he's so kind, he's doing an amazing job. We had uh, yesterday uh, spent a lot of time with him and then we continue to be in touch with you, Sir. And also thank Swastha team for being such a supportive group. I, I would have never asked for better than this, Nagaraj and then Sudhaya Sir and then Chintaka, you're amazing. We can only say this. And this only makes us to come back again and again to Sri Lanka. And, and also, like, maybe I have some of you have a question. Why Sri Lanka? Like, maybe it can be done anywhere. We all know we go to Himalaya, we do a retreat twice a year there. We love Himalaya. And the whole Sadgama effort is to spread that Himalayan wisdom. Sri Lanka is also part of Himalaya. Many of you, if you know this, if many monks, you know, like highly the enlightened master, they, from India, they visited Sri Lanka actually, starting from Mahavatar Babaji. And you heard about uh, this uh, Nityananda, Ganeshpuri Nityananda, enlightened master. He spent a lot of time in Kathar Grama meditating. He came to Sri Lanka many times. And we all know uh, Vivekananda visited a couple of times, you know, uh, Sri Lanka. He literally walked around a lot of places. And even this Buddha energy so much in this country. And even there are many others, like if you say Bhoganathar is Babaji's guru. Before, why Babaji came to Sri Lanka? Because searching for a guru. And his guru, Boganathar, was staying in Kathar Grama. And before him, his guru, who was that? Agastya. Agastya was in Kathar Grama. Like, so in that way, the whole bunch of saints and enlightened master lived their best part of their life in Sri Lanka. Like, that's why we all say Hanuman is here. Right? Remember? Like, Hanuman visited this. And even, uh, there is, a, you know, this very famous uh, story. You know, there is a tribe in Sri Lanka there's a tribe in Sri Lanka. We are actually in effort of finding the tribe with them, with the help of the, you know, our friends here. So Matanga, you know, Matanga, Matanga, Matanga tribe, where Hanuman come and visit them once in 40 years, literally talks to them. There, there is a, a big story about it actually. Like, uh, this is one place Hanuman loves. Like, so why? Because this place, if you really go back to ancient time, and you know, they say even we all remember this place because of Ramayana, yes, sir. Okay, the mighty Ravan was here. But even before Ravana, who was here actually? How did Ravana choose Sri Lanka? Any idea? Yeah. Bef yeah. Any idea? Like before Ravan, Kuber was here actually. Because Kuber is being a, such a, you know, uh, an enlightened and he's a king of Ekshas, you know, having all supreme powers and being in touch with all gods, you know, and he was searching for a better place to live. Think of this. And the entire earth, he found, which is, which is the better place? Sri Lanka was the better place. Think of this. <laughs> okay, he found Sri Lanka and he settled down in Sri Lanka. And he was here, he was here, he was in Sri Lanka, Kuber. And Ravana happens to be a brother of Kuber. And then Ravana said, I am almighty, I am very powerful. How come you are, you are staying in a better place? Get out from here. <laughs> he picked up a fight and then, you know, thrown uh, Kuber out. Kuber didn't want to pick up a fight with Ravana. He said, okay, you want to stay here, you stay here. That's how Ravana settled down here in, you know, in Sri Lanka. So in that way, again, before that, if you go back, you know, Manu, heard about Manu? Manu's kingdom was here. So in that way, I'll tell you, Sri Lanka is vibrationally very high if you know how to connect to it. It's not an ordinary place. So you being here, you know, and with all these wonderful people, like Sir said, I really believe, you know, Sri Lankan people are extraordinary. 
I'm not here because I'm Sri Lankan. I'm mentioning this. No, I've met them. I've interacted with them. They're vibrationally something very different. So in that way, we are looking forward to establish a center here in Sri Lanka. So we'll have a center, five element center. We also do a lot of research. And then many of our, you know, like people who want to attend a program, you know, from Europe or US or other places, we want to bring them here. So that's where this connection with Swasta. We want to go a long way and also help, you know, fellow Sri Lankans in this journey together. So with this, thank you so much for allowing me to speak a few words. And thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. Myself and Chintaka went to Bangalore just to explore the possibilities for the clinical waste management. We did some uh, ground survey and uh, we came back. When we came back, our chairman, Udev Abhay Sekara, he said, why can't you look into tourism? Because uh, Sri Lanka, we get a lot of tourists from India and it's your own country. Why can't we explore the possibility of starting a tourism company? I said, I don't have any experience and I don't have any team. How to do it? He said, don't worry, I'll support you with all these things. Uh, just think of it. Then uh, when I spoke to my, some of our friends, they said, yes, we are ready to support you if you are doing this uh, tourism activity. Then we started uh, this activity. Meantime, Dr. Sanjeev uh, Kubakadi, who one of my friends who knows uh, Maheshwar also. So he said, OK, we want to come to Sri Lanka to see uh, where we can conduct our uh, retreats in Sri Lanka. Then I told him, uh, we have a tourism company, inbound travel tourism company. So he said, okay, let us see how we can work together. Then uh, Mahesh sir and uh, Sanjeev came to Sri Lanka. So I arranged uh, inspecting a few space uh, uh, spots, especially Jetwing Lagoon and uh, some other spots. Finally, they said, okay, Jetwing Lagoon is a nice location for us because of the logistics arrangement and everything. So we decided to conduct the first retreat here. And also after uh, doing this, I became a follower of Sadgamaya. July end, I went to India. <laughs> Then I participated in one of the breathwork sessions in Kukke. Kukke Subramanya is a very powerful place like Katargama in uh, Sri Lanka. Kukke Subramanya is a very ancient and sacred uh, Karthikeyan temple in uh, Karnataka. So I was lucky to go there and uh, get the uh, first experience. Without that, I will not be able to talk to other people. It was really amazing. Nobody will believe just breathing for one hour can make such a big change. I never believed it myself. I was thinking like pranayama, something like that, but it is totally different. So you people, you already know, but other our uh, uh, Sicily Swasta team, I am telling you, you must make use of this opportunity and level the experience yourself. Okay, now, finally, I will uh, do my work, uh, thanking our uh, chief guest and all the participants and our chairman and other people. Uh, so Sicily Swasta, when we decided the team, uh, the chairman and our other directors and all other team, they did a wonderful job. So we welcome our uh, chief guest uh, today and uh, thanks for your valuable time, sir. Even though with your busy schedule, you came here and uh, addressed our uh, gathering. Thank you very much. CCP Projects Consortium Private Limited Aitani Embedded Women, Aitani Sabhapati, Premukha Pele Vivasa Kik Bana. उदय अभिषेक महता आयतने विधायक मंडल प्रधान विधायक निलदारी चिंतक अभिषेक प्रधान मेहूम विधायक निलदारी समुद्र हेवा विक्रम महता मेन्म अध्यक्ष के पी नागराज महत मूलिकेन सह सामा अधिकारी समूह व्यापार मलिंद नानायकार महत संघ शक्तियन बेमेडसटन क्रियात्मक वनवा